There is nothing worse than untapped potential. If you know that you're made for more, this is the place. I know that every successful person I've ever met has one thing in common. They do not let themselves fall victim to their circumstances. They figure out a way to rise above it. So join me on this journey where I help you to be better, do better, and have better in life and in business. If you're feeling stuck and you're needing some practical tools, some hope to get you to that better life, this is definitely the place for you. Hey, 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 everybody. Welcome to the Unstuck Podcast. I am your host, Michelle Weeby. Today, you guys get a chance to meet one of my new friends, Regard Tang. You guys, she left her full-time career to pursue her dreams, but life is not as linear as social media can make it out to be. And I love Regard's story about how she was able to transition from one passion to another because we connected over that, you know, how I left my anesthesia career to go after business consulting. And I just think that it's so fun for you to open up your vulnerable story to let all of us know that we are not alone on this journey, that it's okay to pivot. It's okay to, to not be okay. Sometimes it's okay to rediscover yourself. It's okay to heal. And I can't wait for everybody to get a chance to hear from you, to learn from you, to be inspired by you. And I just want to welcome you to the show. Yeah. Hey, everyone. Thank you, Lichelle, for having me on the show for today. Um, my name is Regard. I am um, an energy healer, a clairvoyant, and a medium specialized in emotional trauma healing and ancestral trauma healing. And um, soon we'll dive in a little bit more about my story, but that is my title. <laughs> yeah. And I would love for you to know, because I always appreciate it when the people that are listening are like, oh my gosh, like I need to connect with her. So who are the people that you absolutely love to serve? Um, so I would love to serve people that, first of all, they want to heal, right? Because that we all come from a space of trauma and like different issues, stuckness, and we all have our baggage, not yeah. only from us, it's right. from our family, yeah. our parents, our great grandparents, right? And a lot of time that people don't know that they are carrying that they're like unnecessary baggages is not from it's not from them. Yeah. So I'm here to let them know the information and able to download it from their ancestor. And like, hey, look, your ancestor went through this. And this is the reason why that your parents was going through this. And this is the reason why that you got treated like this. So they have the clarity and understanding yeah. what is the behind curtain and like the behind the scenes story. Yes. So then they can move on or like able to let go a little bit instead of the guilt, the shame that they are holding on for so many years. Absolutely. And you guys, like if you're listening to this and you're like, huh, this is an interesting take on it. I want you to acknowledge the fact that there are things in your life and in your business that you know you need to do, but you're not doing it. I have found in working with my clients that there's often an energy block that is preventing you from moving forward. So if your logical brain says, why don't you just do this? Why don't you just pick up the phone and call these people? Why don't you just post on social media? But you cannot get yourself to do it. There may be something underlying that is physically preventing you from taking that step. I also love the fact that you brought up this ancestral um, baggage because what people don't realize is that we do have ancestral energy blocks that are genetically passed down. Like, I don't know if you guys realize this, but it's a big deal in your genes. It is attached and it is passed down through nature. And we also are picking up baggage from our ancestors, our parents, our grandparents, because of the way that they were raised in trauma and they interact with us in their traumatic, you know, healing or non-healing in the way that they interact with, with us. And so it's nature and nurture that you're talking about. And so what I love about this just overall field of, of science and field of, of healing is recognizing that if you're feeling stuck, which is those of us on the Unstuck podcast, right? It's the, the feeling of I am somewhere that I don't want to be and I want to wiggle my way out of it. It's such a unique, great perspective to be able to think like, crap, I've tried everything else. Like what else am I missing? Like this might be what you're missing. And I think it's really cool, sister, how you got to this place, because this is not the career that you initially started out with, and this is not the business that you started with. So why don't you tell us a little bit about that journey? 
Yeah, absolutely. Um, so before I go on to my journey, I would love to touch base a little bit of what you provide the information. Yes. Right? yes. A lot of time that for us that <clears throat> we, our brain was telling us that, oh, we have to do this. We have to do this. We have to do this. That is your conscious mind. Your conscious mind is only running 8%. Yes. Your subconscious mind and your experience is running at the background for 92%, right? Yes. So that is one thing I want to tr- touch on. And then another thing that I love how you said it. Um, our genetic is like me as an Asian, right? So like that is my genetic because from my parents that they both are Asian. But however, from upper genetic, it means that that there's like it's like a software coded yes. that is at the background that is not showed up on yes. our body, right? Yes. Um, so that is something that I want to touch on. Um, and yes, as you said earlier, that this is not my first career this is actually my fourth career (laughs) um yeah so um i graduated my background was advertising at first and then um during 2008 the market crashed and um that was my first job and when i walked out i was like i wasn't sure what i was going to do and my boyfriend during that time was like hey like what do you want to pursue? And I was like, well, I always want to learn makeup. I always want to, I think that like makeup is just so fascinating. And when I was young, was like six, seven, eight years old, when I was flipping through the magazine, I was like, this is just so fascinating, right? Right. So I always have the sense of fashion, but I never thought that I would step into it. So um, 2010, I, because 2008 that I got laid off from the job and then 2010 to the point that I was like, I, I can't just like keep looking for a job and trying to get back to marketing and, and can't get anything. Right. So after the conversation with my boyfriend during that time, I flew back to Hong Kong, uh, cause I originally learned from there. I born and raised in Hong Kong. I flew back um, on 2010, spent six months there and got uh, makeup certificates. And I thought that, hey, I'm just going to learn makeup and see where it takes me. Yeah. And then yeah. where it takes me that it took me, I'm still doing makeup on the side now. It's 13 years. <laughs> and um, so after the uh, the certificate, I moved, moved back to San Francisco and I start my journey As a makeup artist, I didn't know where to start. So I just do weddings for a living at that time. Um, But I know that weddings is not something that I'm passionate about. And I got to the point that I was like, whatever, I just need to move to LA to pursue my dream, right? Yeah. So, um, so I moved down to LA, packed everything in one car that I can, I can pack. I didn't know where, where to live. Um, I wasn't familiar with it. Um, I do not have any clients. I just like take the leap of faith and just wow. move. Wow. So, um, so I pack everything in the car and I, and I dro- drove down to LA at first. I started living at Airbnb. Um, and then that is how I started. I spent a couple of years in LA and I, know that the next step is New York. And I asked my boyfriend during that time, I was like, hey, would you like to move to New York with me? And he was like, are you insane? We just moved to LA a couple years ago. And I was like, hey, you're not happy. I'm not happy here. And LA just served the purpose that we needed to because we need to build our portfolio. We need to build our client. That is the dream because that is the fashion capital, right? And he was like, let me think about it. A couple of days later, he came back to me. He was like, whatever, let's move, right? I was like, great. (laughs) So we moved back to um, San Francisco a little bit because we both based from San Francisco um, for six months. And then we moved to New York. This time, similar story, but from one car down to two luggages and (laughs) one carry-on for both of us, right? Oh my goodness. So he was a photographer during that time. So he had like a luggage for full of equipment for photography stuff. And while I have more than one and a one third, I would say one and a one third luggage is everything is hair and makeup stuff. And I just brought very little things for my belonging. And I was like, you know what? If I make it here, I can slowly move my stuff, right? If not, whatever, however, like I, I, I sold my car. So However long that I can blow all my money <laughs> to chase after my dream, so be it, right? Um, and I thought that I will live there for like a year or so, but at the end that I lived there for five and a half years. 
-hmm. However, during the journey, I realized that I actually have depression and anxiety without knowing for so many years. Um, I would say when I think back now and then, um, while I was in LA, I already had depressions and I just didn't know what depression was. Mm -hmm. And of course, coming from an Asian background, we do not talk about mental health. Mm -hmm. We do not believe in therapy. <laughs> <laughs> Um, but I got a chance to talk to one of my best friends and she was like, why don't you try therapy? And I was like, you know what? It's a great idea. I'm really good at talking to people. Just give it a shot. Right. I walked in for a session. I was bawling my eyes out. I was like, what is wrong with me? What is wrong with this? Like, there's a lot of sadness, burden, um, it's it just a lot of like unhappiness going on within me. Because of, I feel like when I was in fashion, I consistently giving. Um, and because of the nature, it's very unpredictable. Um, sometimes that you can be like at 6 p.m. and getting a call sheet or getting an email asking, hey, are you available tomorrow at 9 a.m., right? So the nature, you just cannot predict it. You cannot have a, a, nor a quote unquote normal life, right? Wow. Um, I put my family on the side. Um, I put my friends on the side. I put my mental health, my happiness, everything on the side. And I was just really focused. And I was like, I give in all of my energy, everything, my life to the work. And I always joke about, I love my job, but my job didn't love me back. Mm -hmm. And I knew that it's, that it's time for me to step out. So on 2019, I was just thinking, what is the next step I wanted to go, right? Because I've been struggling for my mental health for so long. And I was like, oh, okay, I've been going to therapy. I've been um, like, like listening to a lot of podcasts, um, YouTube videos, books about like self-development, self-help, self-love, everything is self, right? And I was like, maybe the next step is coaching. So I, I searched for a school and I went in for six months and I got my certificate. And funny enough, universe is just like, well, since you're in this journey and at the same time, it was pandemic. Why don't you just focus on, on your coaching school, right? So because of the pandemic and because of uh, what I do, yeah. it's very close to people. I, I, we, like all the sets close, right? So yeah. because I used to work in fashion and commercial, every, every single set close. So I was, what I, I was doing is like, we all struggling mental health during that time. But I was like, you know what? I just have to buckle up to get this certificate so I can serve people. And um, shortly after I got my certificate and I know it's time for me to leave New York because I've been staying in New York for five months during pandemic and there's zero income living in a shoebox um, with my best friend um, in a 450 square footage apartment. <laughs> Thank God we didn't kill each other. Um, and and I was like, you know what? Even though as much as I do not want to move in yeah. to uh, move to Las Vegas and move in at my parents' house, yeah. I have to. Um, and then this is how I start my journey of healing and, and other part of healing with my parents too, right? Oh, I would and love to. Can we like... I'm going to go back to a couple of things that you talked about because I'm curious and I know that the audience is probably very curious as well. And then we'll pick up in Las Vegas. So that's cool. Yeah, so yeah the, absolutely. What I did say is there are going to be people listening and they're like, how did you get the courage to pick up and leave and go to LA and then New York without a plan? Because I think that sometimes people think like I have to have A through Z all planned out and they still get too scared. They still get too nervous. They still overthink it. They still overprepare. And I want to just know a little bit. I want to pick your brain on how you were able to do that not once but twice. Absolutely. So one thing I believe is we are the offer for our own book, right? We can plan everything. But universe doesn't care how you plan. They already have a plan for you. You just have to, sometimes you just have to, like, if your voice is really loud in your head, yeah. it means that your intuition is telling you that you should do it. Yes. Majority people that they push the intuitions and 
the messages away and then it start your body is start having different kind of um physical discomfort it mm-hmm. means that some people that they have headache some people that they have like digestion issues some people that they have like back pain whatever it is a lot of time that when you're not aligning with how you feel your body is start sending you signal because you're not listening to yourself and your body is basically is like i already told you you're not listening and then it's just sending you the 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 alarm right yeah. and then you will get to the point that you can't ignore it okay so. great i love that and then you also mentioned that you discovered while you were in New York that you had anxiety and depression, but you weren't even sure that that's what it was. And so I would love for you to describe to us what kind of, I don't know, what were you experiencing? What were your symptoms? What was it like? So that there might be people out there that they're like, I've never thought about it, but I think that that's me too. So tell us a little bit about what that felt like. Yeah, 100%. So, um, I know now when I think back and after I've been in the therapy for so long, for yeah. five and a half years now, I would say. Yeah. And now I know that <laughs> during that time, I was like really mentally sick. What happened was in the morning when I get up, I wasn't happy, right? I slept more than normal people. I will get up, do whatever chore, whatever like daily things or chore that I need to go. And I drag myself and then I will go back to bed. And then I consistently have this feeling that I just want to be under the blanket and not doing anything and not interacting with people. I had, I'm very high function. Like, like to me, it's not a problem to interrupt people because I'm an extrovert, but it still takes a lot of energy out of me. And one thing I realized about myself was when I was looking in the mirror, doing my own makeup before going to jobs, yeah, I just feel this very heavy and how much I hated myself, how much I hated my life. That moment was a wake up call for me. I'm like, I actually not feeling okay. Mm-hmm. And I, maybe I'm really sick mentally, right? Um, and it is okay to have acknowledgement and it is okay to ask for help. And this yeah. is how I got better, right? Yeah. yeah, that is amazing. Thank you for sharing that. And then one last thing that I am just so curious about what your thoughts are on this. You were brave enough to, you know, do your, your advertising and then your makeup and fashion stuff. And then you moved into the coaching space some of us are stuck in, I, I'm, I'm guilty of this. So that's why I say us are stuck in like shiny object syndrome because I get bored fast. And so I'm like, oh, I should try this. But there's a difference here with you because it's like, it was intuition led mm-hmm. in the space. And so I know that it's probably hard for you to talk about what you're not, but I just wanted to kind of get a sense for how did you know that it wasn't a shiny object, but it was like, you're literally your intuition telling you, this is where I want you to go next. Yeah. So shiny object, it can come and go, but without a fulfillment. Right. Mm -hmm. And I knew that when I was in fashion, it was part of my life journey to learn a lot of things that I will not learn in a normal day-to-day nine-to-five life right Right. um and of course that i do have we all have shiny um syndrome like chasing one thing after another but the thing is this is how marketing right like is is outside that this is how society sell us right but Mm -hmm. i always want to ask i always ask myself and i ask people what you feel the most right And for me, I know that I'm here to serve people. I knew that since I was in fashion. When I was in fashion, when I was someone in my chair, I always listening. I always there as a therapist. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. So I know that that is within me. Um, So I would say that to the listener, they're listening right now. I want them to really to sit still and think about what they want the most. If money isn't a matter. Yes. Um, fame isn't a matter what they want the most to the core. 
And I think that one of the things people fail to recognize sometimes regard is that we have this like underlying purpose that can express itself in different ways. So your underlying purpose is to help people Mm -hmm. and you are helping people in the makeup industry and you're helping people in coaching. And so when we wonder like, what is my purpose? Oftentimes there is that core thing that drives us. And it literally is just a matter of putting on a different outfit or a different hat and letting Mm -hmm. that core purpose be expressed in a different way. And so when you look back, like I think about my own career, like anesthesia and business development are two completely different things, but at the core of both of them is service and helping people. Yeah. And I love to do, you know, I I strongly believe majority of us wants to feel fulfilled within us. Right. Yeah. Yes. And a lot of us that want to help other people. And it's unfortunate that how the, the society market that, Oh, you need this car, you need this house, you need that to, to feel happy. Yeah, absolutely. But honestly, when you get the car, do you really feeling happy? Right. right. So, um, and I want to touch on a little bit about uh, healing um, <laughs> soon. So, um, yeah, I, I, I would, I would love to talk about that. What I actually do now, those are just the background. Yes. Um, is that okay to? Well, well, yeah. Why don't we just go right off into? So now you're in Las Vegas, and yes. that's kind of the beginning of this story. So yeah. So this is a, a brand new chapter to me, right? Um, it's I've been here for around uh, two and a half years now, but moving in with my parents, I didn't know that I have to heal within heal my inner child heal the relationship with them to do what I do now because now I I serve people and talk to their ancestor and family right and without healing my own self I can't heal another like my clients yeah so it was a a very interesting journey after I moved in because my dad and I we always butt head he has a very strong personality I have a very strong personality and I was like the first year when I moved back here I was like what is the purpose of universe wants me to live with my parents? I do not understand. Right. And um, one thing that to the end other on 2021, um, it was still doing pandemic. I can't really go out. So I spent a lot of time with my family to try to understand why they sent me to the States when I was 11 without them because they, they stayed behind um, because my dad, he has a really great job. And I didn't know that, that it manifests a childhood trauma for me wow. and it, and it affect me as an adult. Right. So um, when I was 40 moving in with them, I was like, this is very interesting because I haven't lived with you guys for most of my life. Right. And um, so it happened. But during the time I was like, you know what, I just need to really trust the process, really trust the universe, even though it's extremely uncomfortable, even though that I don't like this, yeah. it's not, it's not what I was looking for. Right. But one thing led to another after I was having a stronger relationship with them, healing my inner child more, my gift, it just happened one day doing December, 2021. It just unpacked. Like when I was in, um, in an event and I met the host and then when the host like got a chance to read me and I start hearing that unit first start talk sorry um spirit start talking to me and when i when i was breathing through the client i was able to cry for a person that she was really having a lot of emotional trauma and a lot of burden within her so that was how my gift impact wow that's that's amazing and i want to go back into some of the inner childhood trauma because i think that one of the things that we often do is we jump to conclusions that if I wasn't, you know, sexually, you know, abused as a child, or if I didn't lose a parent prematurely, or if I didn't, wasn't beaten, then there isn't like this trauma. But I'm going to give you guys my example, because I can't imagine being an 11 year old and and going to the US without my parents. So I'm like, that's like crazy, amazing. And we just, the, what I'm trying to say is that we, we all have our own thing and we can't necessarily compare, um, thinking that it's less 
significant than it is because it's, it's our own journey. So in my own healing and in my own work with people in this, I discovered that something as simple as knowing that my mom was a young woman at the age of 20, when she got married, 21, when she had me. So by the time she was 26, she had three kids under the age of five. And I have grown into a woman with a block in my business of being deathly afraid of reaching people into their direct messages. Like it just is such a block for me. And I discovered that being a little kid with a mom who's literally practically raising us herself because my dad was so busy on the farm that I felt like a bother to her. And my deep rooted feelings of being a bother manifested themselves as an adult in my business where I was afraid of bothering other people and how yeah. could I possibly serve them or meet my own goals if I can't have a conversation with people out of that fear to be a bother and so how did your experience manifest itself into your adult life yeah um, what are some of the things that you've seen in other people that you've helped uh- Honestly, thank you for sharing that. I thank you for being vulnerable. I love your story. Um, to me, I didn't know that I was consistently asking for attention. Mm-hmm. Means that, like, I wouldn't say that I was a drama queen, right? <laughs> but when it comes to relationship, because I was so close to with someone, right? I consistently asking for for attention because when I was younger, I I didn't get the attention that I want, even though I was the only child, even though that my parents actually, they give the attention that they thought that they did the best, which is I'm sure that they did, right? But they just didn't know that better that when someone that young, they actually want to be around you they actually want to be nurtured and um for my example I didn't know that I was lagging on that and I consist consistently serving people or giving people in order to get the validation yes 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 right so so that was something that I realized that I was I was asking for that without me knowing it. And after being in therapist therapy for so long, and now I realize that sometimes it's not them. Right. Like it's, it's not, it's not like if someone, if someone reject you or someone yeah. that they cannot give it to you, it's not them. It's, it's either they are not fully healed. Right. Which means that they do not have that kind of container to give it to you. Yep. Yeah. Or it's just not meant to be together. And you have to accept that it's okay, right? And now that I learned to one thing that I have to choose myself. Yeah. And um and in your story, I would say that we all have different kind of blockages, right? And we all have our little like story in our head. Yeah. yeah. And when you say that, oh, I don't want to be bothered because oh, were you the oldest or in the, the middle? Yeah. The yeah. Oldest. So, so you feel a lot of burden within you that I have to be like, oh, I have to be the best sister. I have to be the best child. So my parents will, will give me the attention and give me the love yes. that I want to, yes. and then be the model for uh, my brothers and sister. Right. Absolutely. Yes. And um, I believe one thing is we all longing for love. And most of the time, we don't know how to ask for love. Mm -hmm. And because that we don't think that we deserve and also because that we never heal to able to validate ourselves in order to ask for love. And I think like, it just takes this awareness that I'm living in a way that I don't want to live anymore in a, in a sense, like something wants to change, something needs to change because I am not expressing myself at the highest level that I can. And I recognize it's all the things that you said that I was in order to, to prove my own worth or to validate a reason for somebody to give me that attention. I learned to people, please. I learned to perform in a way that was an achieving, like if I get all A's, I got attention. If I 
you know, got into a, you know, full ride at, at, out of college, I got attention. I, you know, got this degree and then this degree and then this degree, I got that a good attention. And it was all to fill a hole within me. I found that even in my own leadership, I would do things that other people could do for themselves out of thinking I was helping, but really I was doing it to validate my own worth. Right. And it took in my adulthood being pruned of some really important relationships that I had people that I cared deeply about, but the relationships weren't able to withstand some things that happened. I recognized that pattern in myself and I recognized that, oh my gosh, like I have been serving in a way that in my service, I was getting something from it. I was getting that validation. I was getting that worth. But once I was able to recognize that I am already whole and I can allow my love to, instead of serving you and then getting love back, I was literally able to let my love be an out overflowing out of me and overflow into other people. And I could serve from a whole place, but it took me recognizing that this isn't how I want to be recognizing that even going through a hard thing and having to reflect and think, okay, what can I take from this? And I would love to just hear more about what things would you love for us to think about? What things can we do if we're recognizing that, hey, this isn't how I want to be. I wonder if there's something that I need to resolve or how do I, how do I move forward once I kind of have an idea that this might be the cause? Yeah. So I want uh, the listener to ask themselves if when you are doing something for other people, they are not giving you the response that you want, will you still do it? Mm. Right. So that is, that is a deep question. That is not. Uh, absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> because, because one thing I realized that, um, a lot of us that when we respond, it is a trauma response, which means that my attention and your people pleasing are very similar. A lot yeah. of people pleasing is come from tra- childhood trauma or just trauma in general to get the validations from other people. Yeah. When people do not validate you, can you truly able to validate yourself? When you're able to validate yourself already, that is the core that you want to get into. Yeah. And another thing that I want to talk about is uh, many years ago, I was talking to my best friends and I was like, I give 50% and I hope that this person is giving 50% back, right? But I was like, after, after I've been in therapy, I was like, wait, 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 hold on. We all have 100%. It's not, you give half, I give half. Same as when people that they're in the relationship, oh, I found my better half. Mm. This person complete me. This person doesn't complete you. You have to complete yourself first in order to find someone that they also complete themselves. And then they, you guys come in to a partnership. Yeah. So it's not 50-50. And think about that. How can I give people my 100% even though this person is only giving 20% back? Maybe this is their maximize for their container. Yes. Are, you able to, are you able to deal with that? Yes. And it's, I think that when you haven't healed, our immediate response is what's wrong with me, mm-hmm. right? They're not giving me what I, I want or need, or I would expect expectations will like ruin our joy, like over and over again, because we can't expect anything from anyone because we all have our stories. We all have our baggage. We all have our trauma. We all have our healing journey. And so when I expect things from other people, I'm going to be disappointed, right? Yeah. And also that I feel like you have to set, you have to communicate what is your expectations, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. Um, one of my, I have, I have three best friends. So, and one of my other best friends was like, well, I've been with him for six years already. Why he doesn't get me? And I was like, hold on. Even though me as an energy healer, I don't read minds. No one can read minds, right? You have to communicate what are you expecting, what is your need, and your partner able to meet you halfway or right. meet your expectation. If if this person can, and then you have to think about is this person meant to be for me, right? Mm-hmm. So communications is key to um, any kind of relationship, including yourself. Yeah. Tell us a little bit about that, communicating with yourself. Um, sorry, ask me one more time. 
Yeah. So what does that mean to you when you say we have to learn how to communicate with ourselves? Yeah. So um, one thing I learned in the last few years to give myself compassion, right? So as an extreme type A and um, a person that who always want to achieve something, huh. it was really hard for me to slow down and, and allow myself to take a day off, right? And after learning in the past that I have a conversation is like, oh my God, you're so lazy. You're not achieving this. You're that. Those are the story that you're building up. Is that the negative story that you want to have as your background? Yes. Or like, hey, I am having compassion to myself means that, hey, I've been working so hard on this. I allow yes. myself to take a day off, right? It doesn't mean that you're allowing every single day. <laughs> no, no, exactly. And but, yeah, but no, also, yeah, sorry. But also is finding the balance. Yes. Where's the balance for that? That is the key for your happiness, your success, your relationship with yourself, your relationship with everyone. Okay, talk about that balance a little bit more. So the balance means that like, a lot of people that do it, they do it extreme, right? Especially for ladies out there like, oh, I have to have a full-time job. I have to like take care of my kids. And like I, my husband like expect me to um, have uh, dinners ready, right? Yeah. That, yeah. That, that is just one of the more extreme yeah. um, uh, sample, but example, but also like you can, can you like how to like communicate with your partner? Like, hey, look, you're working 40 hours. I'm working 40 hours. What is our communications to like sharing a chore? How can, how are we going to waste the kid? Right. And then like, that is like when you're able to able to communicate, you're able to find the balance instead of like, Oh, I'm going to take on everything. Right. That is one of the example. And when you're example for like, how can you find balance within yourself? It means that like you, I consistently checking with, my mental health and I consistently checking in like am I feeling okay that is a very basic question but that is a huge question for yourself right when your your answer is like actually I'm not feeling okay what are you missing how can you fulfill yourself right um so for me um I love to hang out with my 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 friends I'm an extrovert but at the same time that I want to have the time to sit with myself that is the balance that I can provide to myself. Yes. So I can, I can serve other people's better. I can be yes. better when I hang out with my friends. So and Yes. I love that so much because you're a hundred percent right. That you, we have to show up as a hundred percent of our best self in order to be able to give. And when we take care of ourselves, when we speak kindly to ourselves, when we communicate our needs to others, when we give ourselves a time to rest we allow ourselves to show up in the best way to be the 100% partner for all of the other things in our lives. And we don't have to rely on those expectations of somebody else giving us something that we need when we're already whole and full to start. Yeah, 100%. Oh my gosh, I love that. I love, we can talk all day long. There's so much more that I want to ask you because I love, I love all of the, the spirit stuff too. So maybe we'll just have to have another conversation again. But I just wanted to thank you so much. Is there anything that we haven't had a chance to talk about that we should definitely, you know, bring up right yeah, now? Yeah, so I want the listener to think about that what is healing means to them, right? Um, and a lot of people that they thought that, oh, when they have to do the healing, it's like one and done or like, oh, how much time I put in it. And people would say that like, oh, time heals everything. That is a misconception. Time, if you don't put work in the time, time do you nothing. Right, right. Yes, 100%. And healing is a hard work and healing is a life journey. If you feel stuck now, if you feel your, your light esteem, do you want to be like this forever? If you don't want to be like this forever, the only way out is walking through the tunnel in order to get to the other side. Yeah. Find the light. So I highly encourage people to, no matter that they find a therapist or like spiritual um, guidance, which is like me as a medium, right? To understand more information. Um, 
or talking to friends to start with. Start healing yourself and stop blaming whatever circumstances it happens to you. Amen. We are 100%, you know, up accountable and responsible for what we do with the things that we've gone through. So you're not responsible for what happens to you, but you are responsible for the choices that you make to rise above that. And I love that. Like that's everything that this podcast is about is making that choice and making that choice to get unstuck. And I love the fact that you gave us so many great nuggets of wisdom and just insight into your journey on on ways that we can take big and little steps in obedience um, with our intuition guiding the way. So You guys make sure that if you haven't already hit subscribe, leave a review, rate this podcast. And if you absolutely want to make our day, you're going to go ahead and take a screenshot, share this out on social media. Let us know what you learned, tag your friends, share it out, whatever you need to do. And it's just always so much fun when you leave a review and let, you know, all of us know what it is that we did to impact your heart. And I want to conclude our our day with you answering a question that I ask all of my guests when we conclude. And it's, if you could have the audience think of one question that's going to move them from where they are to where they want to be, what would you ask? Ah, that is a big question, actually. Let me, let me sit and think about it. Um, I think I will ask... I, will, I think that this is going to be a quick, big question. Big question. I would love the listener to think about that. Are they feeling fulfilled at this moment? If they are not, how is it going to be feeling fulfilled? So yes. they will be able to get unstuck. Yes. So what would, a, what would a perfect day, a fulfilled day look like? Yeah. Yeah. So like, what is the perfect day? As you said, like fulfilled day looks like. And I want people to really sit down to journal. Like Mm -hmm. journaling is very powerful to write down. It doesn't really matter that you just write three bullet points or 30 bullet points, but what is it going to look like? And then ask yourself, am I feeling fulfilled at this moment? If it's not, how can I move forward with this bullet point that it feel, it make me feel fulfilled and then just break it down. Oh my gosh. I love that. You guys, I hope that you got as much out of this episode as I did. Thank you so much for showing up today, you guys. And I hope to see all of you next week. Bye everybody. Thank you. Thank you so much for listening to the Untuck Podcast. I'm so grateful to be on this journey with you. And don't forget to check out the show notes if you want to get into my private club, The Better Club, to be able to learn better ways to be better, do better, and have better. So until next time, keep showing up. Let's get unstuck together. Have a great day.